Romans chapter 4. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath with all to glory, but not before God. Again, works makes you look at me, look what I did, and it rules out God. That's why it's not salvation. For what saved the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So, what Abraham did to please God was God spoke, Abraham believed. We do things out of debt, the work. There are people who work for salvation only because they believe that's what their debt is to God. But the debt has already been paid by Jesus Christ. Abraham, we're going to see in this chapter, it, all his works was justification by his faith, not his works. And we're going to get into a surgical operation again in this chapter. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Again, it's belief versus wor working. But unto him that worketh not, no salvation for working, but believeth on him, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't work for Jesus Christ, that justifies the ungodly, I was ungodly one time, his faith is counted for righteousness. My righteousness is not what I did, it's what I believed. Even as David also describes it, the blessedness of, of the man, Unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Whom God has charged righteousness. No works. David said, blessed is that man. Imputation. Imputation is by believe, is not doing. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin by faith, by believing, minus works. Minus anything you can do. No merit can a man be saved but by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything was done by Jesus already. Everything has been done by God. So when you come up and say, I'm going to do something to please God for my salvation, you're saying that Jesus Christ is not good enough. The sinless perfection righteousness of God Jesus Christ. I need to do something more. And that's a spit in God's face. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? So upon the Jews, upon the, the Gentiles. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Well, Abraham was a Jew. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? When God told him, say, listen, I'm going to give you this promise. I'm going to give you a child. When did that happen? That was before the circumcision. Ishmael was 13 years old when God said, okay, I want you to circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Of everybody in the house. Well, God told Abram, the promise of that one seed long before Ishmael. Because remember when God told him, then, then Hagar says, Honey, here, I mean, uh, Sarah takes, Hey, honey, take Hagar because we can't do it. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in circumcision. So, as a race of people, you're going to say your faith, your works of circumcision is. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get back to the law of Moses. When Abraham was spoken of that his faith was counted for righteousness, he was not circumcised. Uh oh. He wasn't even under the law. 
Abraham, in all counts of what we see in chapter 4, guess what he was when, when God said, I like that, I like that faith. He was a Gentile. Now the Jews are not going to take too kind to that. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised. God says, your faith, your belief, all right, the covenant I'm going to give you is, I'm going to give you circumcision. That came after it. That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, Gentiles, today, that righteousness upon might be imputed unto them also, the Gentiles. Abraham stood for both Gentile and then Jewish people. So we can run our salvation back to Abraham, the works of Abraham, by his faith. God said something. He believed. God told me something. God said, you got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I believe that. All right, I had the same dispensation, the same calling to Abram. Do you believe what I said? Yes. Is it circumcision? No. I was circumcised, but still. And the father of circumcision, to them who are not of the circumcised only, but who also walk in the steps of the, that faith of our father Abraham, when he had been yet uncircumcised. So you can't pull circumcision as a means of salvation, as a means of this is, you know, who we are. Now that came after Abraham believed. For the promise, that was Isaac, that he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. There was no law. That came in Exodus 20. But through the righteousness of faith. Again, we're looking at Abraham. What did he have? He had faith and he had righteousness in what he believed in. There was now none, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, then shall not. There was no circumcision. For if they were Excuse me, if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. So the law would not have made you into the inheritance that God has given. Because God would say, if it was the law, thou shalt believe you're going to have a child in your old age. Oh, okay, yeah. Where's the faith? Where would be the faith if a father tells you, you're going to believe that God and Jesus Christ saved your soul? You're going to believe that. Well, if that child grows up believing that for the rest of their life, they're going to die and go to hell because that's not their own faith. That was a law of the parent. So you see what the law is. The law makes you. The law shows you that you're a sinner. But belief and salvation and justification is without the law. It was without works. Because the law worketh wrath. There was no wrath put on Cain. He was marked and sent off to be a vagabond. But there was no wrath because there was no law. A curse was put upon Adam and Eve. Why? Because there was a law. Thou shalt not eat of that fruit. And they did it. So in Genesis 3 and 4 we see... Where there's a law, there comes a curse when you disobey God. Then we see, okay, there's a violation of a conduct of man that is wrong, murdering, but there was no law. Because the law worketh wrath, and where no law is, there is no transgression. How can you be guilty if you don't know what you've been guilty of? Now we think we have a thing in America today is you you can't proclaim that because I don't know the law I'm innocent. In all America you have all rights and ability and 
resources to go check and see what I'm doing. Is it against the law or is it, it's written in books? It's on computer screens. You can think, hey, I'm going to do this, and you can go check the law and see if you can do it or you can't do it. Cain had nowhere to go. I am going to murder my brother. He may not say murder, but I'm going to kill my brother. There's nowhere he could have gone and said that was wrong. Again, Adam and Eve, they can go to where God told them, don't eat that fruit. Cain really didn't transgress, but he transgressed because he didn't have any idea what he was doing. Mom and dad, Abraham, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, were transgressors. Because they knew what they did. They even hid themselves. Now, Cain, we do see some of that kind of thing that, you know, he had a little conversation with, with God, like, well, who, am I my brother's keeper? He, you know, tried to... A conscience, but an actual law? No. <coughs> His conscience before God said, you know what, I've done something wrong. You may not know how serious it was. What do you mean, God? You're gonna you're gonna put a mark on me, make me a vagabond and, and a fugitive all my everyone that sees me is going to So he knew there was an implication of wrong. And that would made him transgression. What makes me a transgressor today? When someone opens up the Bible and says, Thou shalt not steal, well, I've taken pens. I've been known to steal pens. You give me a pen, I'm 99% chance that pen is going to go in my pocket and I'm going to take it out of my pocket when I get in my bedroom. Oh, man. I've lied. Even as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I've lied. Thou shalt not bear false witness. So when I realize those laws, and later on in the book of Romans, we're going to go, Paul's going to quote, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Those laws say you stand before God, you're guilty. And that moment that law says you're guilty, you're guilty. And you can't walk up to God and say, well, I never knew, I never heard. What about that Ten Commandments plaque? What about those bumper stickers I had my Christians put on the cars? What about some of the Christmas carols, which are good? What about those things? See, once you hear the law, you're a transgressor. Now you're obligated to do something. But the law makes us guilty. The law won't bring us to salvation. You can never say the law is going to save me. You stand before that judge and you're guilty. You're guilty. It's only by the mercy of the court that judge will lighten your sentence but you're still guilty you still have a crime that is charged to you unless someone else pays that crime that guilt as Jesus Christ that pardon for being guilty therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed of Abram, Abraham, not to that only which is of the law, Jews, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, Jews and Gentiles. Now, there's a magazine that directs at, at the grocery store. They did this thing last year, I think it was a couple years ago, Abraham, the father of the, of the Jews and the father of the Muslims. Okay, yes, he is. He's also the father of Christians. Now, when we get into boys, we got a problem. The promised seed is of Isaac. Okay, that's a Jew. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Islam is of the child that God said, get rid of her, the bondwoman, Ishmael. 
and the Christians that follow after Jesus Christ are even long before those boys are, are, are even thought of. When God said, you believe I can do this, Abraham? Yes, I believe you can do this. Lord, Abraham, that is that is your righteousness, and you're going to be the father of all those people. And in your seed will be the Lord Jesus Christ, which will either save or damn soul by what you did. What's that? Faith and belief. Long before the circumcision, long before the law. I did the same thing that Abraham did. What's that? I believe God at his word. As is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. And there even with Katrina. I forget how many children he had with her. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth makes alive the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Genesis 15. Who against hope, who against hope believed in hope. That he might believe the father of many nations, or become the father of many nations, who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many. God was 100 years old. I'm never. Before God. That's it. We're not going to have any children, Sarah. I know. We're old fargies. Yep. Abram, yes, God. I'm going to make you and Aunt Sarah have a child. It's going to be the child of God. Your seed should be as the sand of the sea, as the star. And what did God, what did, what did Abram have? He had hope that he was going to be a father of many nations. God said it. Hagar came to be to cheat God. But Hagar, many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. See, the hope, the first hope, is God spiritual. Believed in the hope. The impossibility that I, I can't be a, a father, I'm too old. And God became his hope. And what he said. And being not weak in faith. Now watch this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Verse 18. The evidence of things not seen. Now watch this. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Well God. I'm going to have a bunch of children. Yeah okay but my body's dead. I, I can't do that. That's not faith. That is not faith. That's doubt. That would have got Abram damned. There wasn't. And listen, I know Abram. I know Sarah laughed at God later. But at that moment, God said it. There was no laugh. Really? Okay. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah, 90 years old, has passed that time for a woman she's womb is dead absolutely no child would ever come from Sarah it's dead and yet being now not weak in faith impossibility and deadness Okay, God, I believe you. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. What is that statement? In me, I can't do it no more. And, and my wife, we cannot do that no more. And that's the faith. And what is the faith when you believe on Jesus? There's nothing I can do, Jesus. There is nothing I can do, please God. It has to be in God. And God, it has to be you, Jesus. You see why you have to have Jesus is God and God is Jesus? Because there's nobody else that can do your salvation.
And we throw faith around. We put it on plaques. We put it on this. And we don't realize what real faith is. We got to take God by his word. Now, later on, Abraham and Sarah, they're going to laugh. They're going to have doubts. But that moment when God first speaks to you about his word, that moment you believe, that's it. That's your faith. Now, Satan will get in there and mess it up. Satan got in there and messed it up with Hagar. Satan got in there and messed it up with Ishmael. Satan got in there and messed it up with Abimelech. Satan got in there and messed it up with Pharaoh. Satan got in there and messed it up. Tell him it's your sister. And with all that, Abram still believed that God would give him a child and a promise. That he'd be all these nations. And when he walks up that mountain with his boy carrying the wood, he would say, God will provide himself the lamb. Now, is that a confession of faith or not? There it is. And Abraham would never see that day. And Jesus Christ spoke, Abraham, our father, love to see this day what was that day the day that jesus christ the son of him the son of abraham would go and die for our sins like he would have that day when he sent his son up on that on his mountain himself and then when you read isaiah 53 i forget what it was you get like three quarters away it speaks about the the seed of who jesus christ where did it all come from from Abraham's faith deadness you know another thing why it wouldn't have to be a, a born of a virgin Jesus was not only was the kingly line of David cursed and hey you ain't gonna have no more children Jeremiah but isn't Mary like Sarah it's impossible for her to have a child not of age but not being with a man So there we have the deadness of Sarah's womb. Check out all the Jewish women that had trouble trying to get pregnant. How Satan tried to get in there. So God would have to have Mary, no man at all, but the Holy Spirit come on to her. And it will grow in her womb. The child of the highest. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He had no unbelief. We're seeing what faith really is. You can't take this word and just throw it around at people. You'll make them get a false hope of what faith really is. Faith is taking God at his word. It's not a light word. Faith today, like I said, is made into a marketplace of putting on signs, mirrors, and all kinds of things. My faith rests upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. How do you believe that? I just believe that. What if what if God's wrong? What if that you know, what if I do die and go to hell? Because then that's what it's gonna have to be. But right now the Bible says my faith rests upon the merit, finished work, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's all I'm trusting on. And there's nothing else I can say about it. There's nothing else I can do about it. I can just rest assured in what God said. As much as God says Jesus is coming again. I didn't even see him the first time. I am taking God at his word. At the second coming. And the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God, I mean, giving glory to God. And that's what pleased God. What? The faith. And God being, being pleased with the faith of Abraham, the fruits would be giving glory to God. The giving of glory did not please God. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. But that faith. I've got the God. I've got the word of God. Then you got joy. 
and being fully persuaded. Look at what faith is. It's impossible, verse 19. There was no staggering. There was no unbelief. It was strong, fully persuaded that what he had promised, God promised, he was able to, to perform. If you come to God and believe what God said and you waver, that's not faith. You've got to take God at his word for what he said. And what example does Paul give us right into the Romans? A man that God told him completely, absolutely by two people, it's impossible to happen. And in that impossibility, Abraham said, okay. That'd be with me getting on an ocean liner, going across the Atlantic Ocean and throwing a dime into the Atlantic Ocean. And putting on a scuba uniforms and diving at that right moment, all the way down and going straight down to the bottom of the ocean and finding that dime. That's an impossibility. probably won't happen God never said it and yet God told two people a man and a woman an impossibility that would be a possibility and they believed and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness What was the righteousness of Abraham? He believed God at his word. Salvation of Abraham because he believed what God said. For Abraham was believing that he would have a baby, that he would never be able to have a baby. How is that for salvation? My salvation is believing what God told me to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. What was Noah's salvation? If we were to look at the, the illustration of, of Abram. Build the ark and get in it. And did he? Yes. And he was saved. Who did not believe Noah in his preach? Everybody that was outside that ark. During those 40 days and 40 nights. They died and went to hell. When John the Baptist came, what was to be their faith? What John the Baptist, the, the voice in the wilderness, Matthew 40, 39 and 40, I forget which one it is. That he was the, 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 the voice before Jesus Christ. Some believed and some didn't. But Abraham, was his righteousness was because he believed God. I'm in the same boat with Abraham and all you who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. What God's, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession man is that Is that, the, is that the, the foundation of your source of salvation by God? And you got the same thing, Abraham. Because you can't do it yourself. Only God can do it. God would have to work into Abraham and Sarah for that to happen. And God would have to work in you for your salvation. Not you work in God. Now it, is not, now it was not written for his sake alone. Which is kind of hard because the story of Abraham was written long after the Israelites were in Egypt. When Moses was up on the mount after Exodus 20, we are told the, the story of Genesis of the book of Abraham. I mean, of the story of Abraham. Abraham never knew that there would be a book, book written with him. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. So Moses sit down and start dictating Genesis 
and you write what I tell you to write inspiration and we read well, words that's supposed to read Genesis and we read about a man who is 90 years old and his wife I mean he's 100 years old his wife is 90 years old, and they're not going to have any children but God says they're going to have a children why read that but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead that story of Abraham back there about the two old farts gonna have a baby was also an illustration of faith for me today even as Paul's writing to the Romans so you can go back to Genesis with the story of Abraham and deal with an unsaved Jew and say you know what that's the point Abraham was the point you to faith in God oh we got the law yeah you can see the law you got the law but what about that part of God you can't see the justification of Jesus Christ how about that because a Jew today hasn't seen Jesus Christ a Jew today did not see him crucified that's that happened over 2,000 years ago the law you can see I can open up and quote you the law that gonna save you you know what nonsense they're doing in Israel today for salvation swinging a chicken around their head where is that gonna save you somebody made that up washing their hands before you eat that's not gonna save you that was made up that's in the Gospels but for us also, Paul writing in his present day in Romans, for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. I've been imputed by Jesus Christ. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses. Ooh, Isaiah 53. It was my offense that Jesus was turned over who was innocent. I'm the guilty one how on earth did Jesus get my punishment because I can't do it you can whip me every way you want to whip me to I've got one string of flesh left over and I die and I'll still go to hell because I'm a sinner and was raised up again oh see you can kill me but I ain't gonna come out of that grave until God calls me out of that grave the resurrection of the just or unjust is all by God the resurrection of Jesus Christ was done by God who was God and will never turn back to that grave again Lazarus went back to the grave Tabitha went back to the grave was raised again for our justification and there's that justification by the resurrection of Jesus Christ you know another story that we're, that you're gonna learn about later on with Abraham as we read in Hebrews he'll take his boy up a mountain to kill him for God and Hebrew says Abraham would have sat right down and he would have believed that God would have raised his boy from the dead right then and there read it Abraham believed that there's the faith we learn all kinds of faith from Abraham he believes in what God says and also through his boy the promise that God said about his boy Isaac God if I kill him you're going to raise him from the dead I don't know how long it'll be but I'll sit here till you do it Hebrews 11 and we see the illustration of what our life is. we are to believe what God says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and one day I will be resurrected to life not damnation matter of fact even before the resurrection the Bible says Paul will write to us later on he says if I were to die before the rapture I will be absent from this body and present with them. how's that for pre-resurrection my body stays but I go Paul said that and I believe the Holy Spirit said Paul say that and I believe I were to die before the rapture happens my body 
will be here and I'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ all happy as ever can be. How can I, how can I, let's look at Abraham for a minute. How can I right now, if I die right now on my own power, how can I get before God? I can't do it. But God said, if I die before the rapture, I'm absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's what God said. I believe it. I've got the same faith as Abraham. He didn't say no little prayer. He didn't have no doodads. But he gloried in what God said. Now let's get with modern Bibles again. Let's get with that. What if you got a Bible that cuts or removes or adds or subtracts or footnotes what God says? You got a problem. You got a problem. Because if they add or subtract from what God says, you do not have what God says. We were looking at a Bible verse the other day, and something about it, the other version said fall. I forgot what verse it was. But and that, that stated that verse, you can fall, but the, the true Bible verse, the King James, you can, stuff, you can get back up. A lot of times you won't get up from a fall. There are people who have fallen and because of their body are unable to get back up again, rightfully. So when we read our Bibles and we read about Abraham, let's not say, oh, we got our three chapters done for today. Let's look at what God wanted to see in Abraham. Great faith. Well, he told his wife, tell, yeah, okay, we're all sinners, aren't we? But he had great faith. Abraham was a terrible husband. Terrible. If a woman, if Abraham would walk up to a woman and say, will you marry me? That, that woman would be all perfect. No way. No way. Yet one thing God said he did have. He was a sinner. And he had the faith. How well though of a husband was he? Sarah believed what her husband said. The Bible says Sarah called him Lord. You can't get Christian women to do that today. And that was written in the New Testament Bible. God said about Abraham, he will command his children and his family in my way before he announces the destruction of Sodom. I know Abraham, he will guide his family. That's a lot to be said. We're all sinners. Abraham's a sinner. But when God says, if I'm going to mention a man of faith, I know one man, Abraham. the illustration we get.